Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be cutting out this cute animal patterned paper using the Brother Scan and Cut. The paper is by Stamping Up and it's called Animal Expedition Designer Series Paper. Let's get started. I've already cut out a partial sheet of this paper and now I've left a few images to cut out together and I want to tell you a couple tricks that I learned along the way. Now, first of all, the trick with the giraffe. It's very important when you scan with the brother scan and cut that lines are enclosed. So my little trick was to take a pencil and enclose this line here with the giraffe. I just took, I just go like this and I'm just enclosing this line. I'm using a pencil and I can erase that again later. And if I want the little eyebrows of the frog to be outlined, like the eyebrows are included, you see those little eyebrows? But if I want them to be outlined, I'm actually gonna need to draw around the frog. You know, maybe like that. Actually, I can just draw around the whole frog if I want the eyebrows. I'm saying it'll make a bigger outline than that, but that's if I want the eyebrows to be fully outlined. I don't actually, I'm just showing you little tricks that I learned. And then the monkey, I didn't realize it didn't cut out all the way. So here's the upside down monkey, or he's not a monkey. Is he a monkey? I guess he is. Macaque or something. Okay, here, not all his little squiggles got cut out. So if I want the squiggles to be recognized, I really need to just draw around the squiggles because somewhere along the way, they got cut off a little bit. And I can just sort of, one thing I could do is just sort of go like this and make this one continuous image. And I think that's that's how I'm gonna handle it if I want those squiggles. I'm just gonna do something like that. Let the white parts be inside, I'm gonna close. I think that will help a lot. I'm enclosing that branch and I'm hoping then that the whole image gets outlined and that included. And you can always erase those marks later. With the rhinoceros, by the way, it was perfect except for, and I'm not doing a rhinoceros right now just to save time, but it was perfect except the tail. Do you notice how my tails did not get cut? So I really need to, you really need to like recognize that before you cut and just sort of make little marks around your tails to enclose those lines so that they all get cut. Other than that, I mean, the, my my brother scan and cut did a pretty good job. I, I deselected all these ones around the edges that didn't cut. Literally, the, every single animal or part of it got got selected and then I deselected them just to save this for the tutorial. But I think it did a pretty good job. Okay, so let's just go, we're going um, back to, we're gonna just show you from the beginning. Okay, when you turn on your machine, you have pattern and you have scan. We're using scan. We're directly cutting these images. We're not saving them, so we're using the direct cut option. I just select my machine, it doesn't matter for that one because we're not saving this. Okay, now, the very important thing, because up until this point we've been using black and white recognition mode, is, is to this, for this paper, you're gonna need to use color recognition mode. Go into the settings, and if you're on black and white, be sure to change to color scanning recognition mode. The color will allow these animals to be recognized. And if not, you're gonna have very low success rate. And, and that even goes for the stamps, but I'll have to talk about that while it's cutting. Let's load the paper. I mean, let's load the mat with that button there. Let's start. And it's very important, let me move this way, to not cover up your registration marks. That's these numbers on the machine because if you cover these up, they will not be able to scan properly. At the same time, these mats are not very sticky. That's why I put some painter's tape in the middle. And now I'm going to put some painter's tape on the outside after I do my scanning. I'm going to say frame the image. Oops cancel that. I, I meant to frame the image. It, uh, yeah, frame the image means select the part of the image you want to cut. And I just want to cut that part. This kangaroo, this monkey, and this giraffe. That's what frame the image means. I don't want to cut the whole thing because otherwise it's going to cut these pieces over there and we, we don't want to do that because it will take forever. All right, so it's recognizing now. It'll be quicker to recognize because I've framed the image. And I can go ahead and take some painter's tape and I can go ahead and I can, you know, tape the paper and cover up the registration marks if I want. 
Okay, did a good job because all I want to cut is the kangaroo, the monkey, and the giraffe, and this little chameleon lizard, and that bird. So let's just do a couple things. We're going to say, okay, the threshold of five is good. That means it's the number of colors threshold, but that's that's actually a good number because it selected everything I wanted it to select. I'm going to delete those extra bits manually instead of ignoring object size. I'm going to put it outline distance around my images of 0 0.04 because that's how I roll. I like to use that outline distance. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And it's going to say there's a part of the paper outside of the area that's fine because it's saying that this little bit over here won't cut. I don't want to cut that little bit over there anyway. Now, this is the time I'm going to show you how to edit. You could just leave all these stray bits. It wouldn't hurt anything, but it would take a lot of time. So let's go into the editing mode. That's the one with the little shapes. And I'm just going to select them using my stylus, which I would be using if I could find it. Oh, here's my stylus. Let's use my stylus. Here's my stylus that came with it. And I'm just selecting and hitting the trash button. Don't delete your draft. Don't delete your monkey, your kangaroo. Just any stray bits of animals that you don't want to cut, like this partial rhino. He's not going to get cut because he's only partial. And the back of that paper is really adorable. I'll show it to you. Well, it's, oh, that's a bird. We want to keep the bird selected. And that looks like another bird down there. All right, great. I'm going to say OK. Oh, one more. There's another stray bit. Back to the editing mode, there's a stray bit. Let's zoom in and see how it looks. Nice. The kangaroo selected, the bird, chameleon, giraffe, monkey. And it did a good job with, with what I wanted it to do. It got my squiggles, which it didn't get the first time on them. So we're happy. I'm going to go ahead and say cut. Before I do that, I want to tell you one thing, that I'm using a blade depth of four because when I use designer series paper, when I cut designer series paper, I use a blade depth of four. And that's by stamping up. If you use other papers, just you know, run a test cut to see what you need. Okay, let's go ahead and say cut. And I've already added some extra painter's tape so nothing slips during the cut. It's only going to take a minute, but I want to show you during that minute. I'm going to go ahead and say okay. Start. Ignore that message about not cutting the area. I want to go ahead and show you the other papers in this in this awesome pack called Animal Expedition. So that's the first piece, and on the back has this nice giraffe pattern. Okay, just showing you all the papers. These are going to be great to cut with the brother scan and cut these smaller animal patterns. Adorable. They'll be easy to cut, these frogs. They'll be easy to cut in the branches. And then these sides I would just use as backgrounds for cards and boxes because the, the sides that are not busy are great the way they are. This one I don't think I'm going to bother cutting because it's there's lots of little birds and a nice small pattern. I might use that for paper purses or something of that nature, boxes. Okay, another one. Oh, hippos coming out of the water would be adorable. Now here's one I've already started cutting. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And that's the back of the alligator paper. I did cut a few of the alligators. I want to give you a little trick for the alligators, just based on my experience from today. Okay, so let's now finish this project though, one thing at a time. We are, it says we're finished cutting. Now, I'm going to say okay. We're going to unload our mat. Say okay. Now you take your spatula tool and you just, actually these are just easy. Just, you just sort of bend the mat and they come up. I mean, or you could use your spatula tool, but oh, my little squiggle didn't come out all the way. And there's my kangaroo. It did come out perfectly. My kangaroo, my chameleon, my giraffe. Okay, but this, this little guy, no. He didn't come out, and that's okay. My squiggle, I thought I was helping. Oh, it did. I did, I did help by drawing around it, but for some reason it didn't make a solid line. So what I would do for that, and that's not a problem, is I would just take... Actually, I would leave it alone. They just look like vines. I think it looks fine the way it is. Nobody would know the difference that all the squiggles didn't come out because that's what happened when I didn't draw around it. 
So you're just getting to see my thought process here. Like some things really just don't matter. Okay. But let me just go through and show you, you know, this paper and how cute everything came out. So here's your hippos. Remember for the hippos, <laughs> draw around the tail to get the tail because it gets cut off. And I don't know why, because it's a solid line and it did it on almost every hippo. So who knows why a solid line was not recognized when that's what the machine does. It cut out tons of these little, when I did it the first time, tons of these little lizards with the fly on the back, the chameleons with the fly on the back. Tons of the little birds cut out just perfectly. And you can see, and my draft, my draft is perfect. Even with almost all the time, it got the eyebrows of the frog, but just barely. So if you wanted the whole eyebrow of the frog, you have to draw a little line around it. So I'm very happy with that. And then I'm going to show you what happened when I tried to do the alligators. Let's put this paper down here. So I did, I did the alligators. They have little birds on the front of them. Again, I used color recognition mode. I used a blade depth of four for designer series paper. And most of the time the alligators came out just fine. See, I'm very happy with that. This is a great embellishment. Go gators, you know, for friends in Florida. And, but look, sometimes the little bird was not recognized and it seemed like it was always the same ones. So, so like this one was fine, but now what you need to do if you just need to check it before you go ahead and cut, because although these are pretty good, you just need to take your pencil. And if you see that it didn't recognize it, then just go ahead and start again. Just start scanning again. Don't, you can't cut until it's recognized, but this is how you fix it. If you see a bird is not attached to your alligator, just take your pencil and enclose the lines. Actually, or the other option is just, you know what you could do? Even easier than that, because you don't want too wide of a Sorry, dropped my microphone. Okay, you could just take your pencil. Put my microphone back. Sorry if it's a little noisy because it dropped. You could just take your pencil and you could draw over the lines of the bird. So here's another way to fix that. If you see all the birds are not coming out right, you just take your pencil and draw over the little bird's legs. Now that way, this whole image will be recognized perfectly. Now, if your bird did not come out, it doesn't matter. I mean, does that matter at all? No, you, I'm just gonna snip, you know, this part here. I actually use something, I can use like white, my white markers or just snip that part off because or you just cut out the bird separately or want to use one of the birds from that other paper and just stick the bird and just stick a different bird on there i mean it's no big deal you can just fix it in many ways so two papers from animal expedition but i'd be remiss not to show you this very very cool suite and if you're interested i have links to my stampin up store at the bottom in the description of this tutorial. Check out the Animal Expedition Suite. It just came out in June in our annual catalog. Okay, here's some projects made with it. This is on page 26 and 27 of our catalog, which is available on our website, of course, electronically, but if you are interested in a paper copy, you need to contact me personally. Okay, you see, this is the paper down here that we're using, designer series paper. But it comes with other, this week comes with a stamp set, which is pretty awesome. And it has, you can also do use the brother scan and cut to cut out the stamped images. Now for when I did that with the animal outing stamp set, I had a really great deal of success. But again, I had to use color recognition mode, even though these are black and white, which is kind of new for me to have to do with a black and white image. But the reason is, is these are, more, this is more like grayscale almost. The way the artist used all these little dots to make these images, you have to actually look closely to see, but that's why I had to use black and white recognition, I mean color recognition mode. And then what I did is I colored in for the stamps. In case any of you are watching, I already have the set. See? I had to color in this giraffe at the bottom with a, I had to make a line, not color, but a line so that it would recognize the draft. And when I didn't make a line, it would cut all this weird stuff at the bottom of the draft's head. 
Okay, so that's the Animal Expedition uh, Suite. This is the Animal Outing Stamp Set. I showed you the Designer Series paper. Um, I want to show you a couple more things. And because this is like my, I think my new favorite rib ribbon in the catalog for sure. Okay, let's see. We're going to look at what it's called. It's called Leaf Ribbon. Okay, so here's this awesome, awesome ribbon. So please check my blog, thepaperchef.com, and see what I do with this ribbon. I think it's going to make a great trim on boxes, little three-dimensional boxes, and, and it's going to be great for cards. My mom already wants to use it because she makes, like, bags for our Etsy store, and she wants to use it already to, like, trim her animal pattern bags. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous ribbon. And lastly, I have not opened these yet, but I'm going to open them right now for you. They're called Frames Elements. And not lastly, there's actually... Also, cardstock coordinating and dies. So there's more things, but this is just what I have so far. This is my second favorite suite. By the way, my first favorite suite is called Sea of, sea of Textures. Okay. Ah, I may have got the name wrong. Okay, but here we go. This is my second favorite. Animal Expeditions is super cute. Now, it came with all these. There's these wood elements. So what you could do is take your blends markers or your Stampin' Up! markers and you can color in these wood elements. That's what I did when I got some of these in one of my paper pumpkin kits. You can stamp right onto the wood. You can stamp sentiments right onto the wood. How super cute are these sentiments that come and they make your projects 3D. So I'll just take out the other sheets. I can't wait to color them and use those to add dimension to my project. Okay, and those are called frames elements. So thank you for watching. This is The Paper Chef, so please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. I appreciate your comments and questions as well.